I am Lester Sherlock from the Jewish Historical Society of Fairfield County, part of the Oral History Project, and today we are at Edge Hill and we have the pleasure of interviewing Estelle Fruckman. The date is June 21st, 2012. Good afternoon, Estelle. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you in your apartment here, and uh, tell us a little about your background, where were you born, okay. and uh, what schools did you go to? I was born in Brooklyn, uh, on Ocean Parkway and Church Avenue, sort of around that area. Went to PS 130. It was a terrible elementary school. There were 50 kids in the class. We sat on the radiator. And I had a reading problem, and nobody knew from helping me, you know, so it was, it's a lifelong problem. You know, more or less, just solve it as you go along. And uh, but after that, my fortunes changed, and I uh, was uh, picked to go to the high school of music and art, which was a fantastic atmosphere. The kids were bright; they were talented. Where was this school located? Uh, this was at uh, 135th Street in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So you commuted every day. I commuted for a while, and then my mother <laughs> took pity on me and moved up to Washington Heights. Mm -hmm. So the commute was a lot less. It was great for me, but my sister complained for years that my mother took her out of Brooklyn with all her friends there. Mm -hmm. So, but then when I went to Queens College after high, uh, high school, my mother said, I can't move again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I traveled an hour and 15 minutes on the subway to get to Queens College. It was a couple of subway trains and then mm -hmm. a bus and then uh, coming home was another hour and 15 minutes, and here I was going to college, and it was difficult studying the trombone and studying the piano mm -hmm. and everything else I did. So I got used to working hard all my life. <laughs> As a student. <laughs> As a student, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what year were you born? I was born in 1925. And what was the date? Uh, um, March 9th. Mm -hmm. I was born on um, Purim. Oh. That's why my name is Estelle. I was named after Queen Esther. Oh. So I always feel in the back of my mind, someday I'll help save the Jews. <laughs> the way she well, that's did. a good thought. And yeah. what year did you graduate college? I graduated in, uh, let's see, I went from 40, 46, right mm -hmm. after the war was over. I went to college during the war. Uh -huh. Were there students in college that were drafted into we the? We had the ROTC on the campus, and the, you know when the girls would pass, they had to turn their eyes the other way. Yeah. <laughs> there was no fraternization or hardly any. It was a dreary time to go to college. It was awful, uh, but. But you lived at home. I lived at home mm -hmm. and I commuted. I went to a city college. Yeah. Of course, there was no tuition at that time. Yeah. And what, what was the student population at that time? Get? My graduating class was 100. Really? That's all. <laughs> it was a very small mm -hmm. college at that time. Yeah. And when you were uh, growing up in elementary school and high school, were there many other Jewish kids? In this? No. No. I did not live in a Jewish neighborhood when I was growing up. I lived in Brooklyn. And it was a mixed neighborhood. Mm. Italians, everything mixed, some blacks. The super skins were blacks. Mm. And uh, it was mixed, so I didn't grow up in a Jewish neighborhood. Contrast to my husband, who came from the Bronx, and he said it was 100% Jewish, everybody was Jewish, but I didn't have that. And so then when I, in, in high school and college, it was just, you know, a smattering of Jews, mm. nothing tremendous. So under those conditions, uh, did you find there was any anti-Semitism? No, I never did. You never did? No. Not the schools that I went to. Mm -hmm. Kids were we all mixed together and it got along very well. And did you uh, participate in any extracurricular activities that were? Musical activities. Mm -hmm. It was a music sorority. I, I don't think I was terribly interested. In, I don't think there was a hill level on campus at that time. And uh, I didn't go to any Jewish organization. Although, when my mother moved to Washington Heights, she was very happy that there was a YM and YWHA. 
which was a block away, so I spent a lot of time. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, it was not too many Jewish activities. It was just, you know, more or less a wide you know, for activities. Is there any special childhood memory or maybe from school did you have a teacher who you felt was a mentor in your, you know, in your background that you could... Yeah, music and art, there were so many excellent teachers. They were hand-picked. Uh, when that school was started, the principal was allowed to pick mm -hmm. his, his faculty. And there were so many excellent teachers. Uh, the English teacher was very good. A social studies teacher was very good. Mr. Gold, he, mm -hmm. he was all my social studies teacher. Uh, getting back more to the family, do you know where your mother was born? My mother was born in uh, Russia uh -huh. and came here with her mother and her s three other siblings when she was two years old. She mm -hmm. came to this country. And her mother came without her husband. I think he was drafted into the Russo-Japanese War. And I think he jumped ship. And I don't know, somehow he wasn't with her. But he eventually uh, met her in uh, New York. They both migrated and stayed in New York. So your mother came from yeah. Russia, and yeah. my, my father came from Russia, but near Romania. Sort of. So when your mother came, were there any children then? Well, she, she came? was two years old. Her siblings. She had a, a brother yeah. and two her sisters. Siblings. Her yeah. siblings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother, I understand, tied the kids to her waist so she wouldn't lose them. You know. Mm -hmm. I recently went across the ocean, yeah. and I realized what a terrible trip that must have been for these people in yes. steerage. You know, it was really hard. And where did your dad emigrate from? Uh, he emigrated also from uh, more or less Russia near Romania, mm. and he was 12 years old when he came to this country. And where did your parents meet? Oh, they. I don't know where they met. As a matter of fact, I never found out. They just each other from the neighborhood, probably, mm -hmm. I'm sure, that's how they met. When did they get married? They got married, that's a nice picture of my mother over there. Mm -hmm. uh, she was 19, I guess he was maybe 23 or 24. Very handsome man, so she was very pretty. He was a furrier. Uh, he had an older brother who uh, left Europe early on and went to England and was apprenticed to a furrier for five years. So he learned the business. And then when my uh, father you know, was an adolescent, he didn't know what to do with himself. His mother said, why don't you go with your brother and learn to be a furrier, which he did. And my father was an excellent furrier. He, he knew everything. He could do anything in the fur business. And he was a furrier all his life. So I always had a fur coat. Not when he came to this country, he was able to find employment? Well, he learned how to be a furrier, and then he went into being a furrier. Well, was, sure was he uh, independent, uh, well, doing furry, fur yeah, boats? Yeah, and yeah. He worked, probably worked for his brother, mm -hmm. and then went into his own business. He had a fur store on Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn, and then he did manufacturing uh -huh. with a partner. Manufactured fur coats. I remember my first concert. I was going up to Montreal, and it, he, he took a, a coat from the rack. He said, "Here, yeah, wear this. It's yeah. better than what you're wearing." Yeah. So I went up with a nice gray Persian lamb coat to, to my first con you know, my first job. I was 16. And your mother was a homemaker. Yeah, my mother was always a homemaker. Did you have any siblings? You didn't I had an older sister. Oh. Yeah, she was about three and a half years older than me, and uh, yeah, more or less got along. Huh? I think yeah, I met yeah, your she sister. Might have, cause yeah, she might have. Yeah, would come to Stanford. Uh, well, we covered the schools you attended. Uh, where did you meet your husband? I met him at a B'nai B'rith dance. Oh. Where was that held? In New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the B'nai B'rith meeting places in the city. My sister didn't want the ticket, so she gave it to me. Oh. <laughs> and I took a friend, 
and, and it's, uh, that night mm -hmm. he, when he asked me to dance, he always remembered the dress I wore. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we went to dinner and we saw a, a, a movie on the Spanish Civil War called Man's Hope. I thought it was very appropriate mm -hmm. for the occasion. And we, we started to see each other fairly regularly from the time we met. The first week he skipped the Saturday night, then the next time he saw me on Saturday night, and then every other Saturday night. So I knew I was in because I was mm -hmm. a Saturday night girlfriend. So how long did you know each other before we, you got married? We uh, knew each other about eight months, uh -huh. and then we got married. Yeah. And where were you married? Yeah, we were married in New York City at the Esplanade Hotel on West End Avenue. It was a very lovely wedding. Yeah. It was a very nice wedding. Uh, and tell us a little bit about your husband. Well, he's very smart. Yeah. yeah I don't know if you remember him. Yeah, I sure do. You do. He's a brilliant guy. And he was a chemical engineer when I met him. Mm -hmm. And I remember during the war, he worked on the Adam Boham. He didn't go to service. He sort of mm -hmm. skipped that. And uh, it was such a new big thing. I had another friend. And, you know, the, the idea of uh, getting a ton energy from atomic sources was so fabulous. Mm -hmm. And here I met someone who was working on it, so I was very happy. And uh, he did that, and then he was working in Buffalo at the time. He came back to New York after he finished that job. By then it was 1946, mm -hmm. and he came back to New York, and that's when we met each other in 46. We married in 47. And uh, he uh, was working in New York when I first met him. He was in a large company, and he kind of felt he, would, you know, it was good to work for this company. Uh, it was a, they were doing oil refinery business, and uh, but there was this opportunity. There was a small company that was starting up in Stanford, and he thought his uh, his prospects would be better in working for a small company mm -hmm. that he could grow with. So he he took that job here. And we moved we moved here about four years later. I at, we were living in Long Island at the time that uh, he he switched jobs. And I was going to Queens College because I wanted to work and I want and I thought, well if I, I had three children I better be a teacher so I could manage my day. So I went back to Queens College. I wasn't too far. We were too far from there. And I went back and took uh, 36 education credits, which mm -hmm. that, that enabled me to get a license to teach. So I got that. And I didn't want to leave Long Island until I had those credits. And then I moved here to Stanford about four years after he took the job. I finally, we finally found a house in Stanford. And, uh, where where did you live in Stanford? We, uh, we lived off um, a Long Ridge Road and uh, Hunting Ridge. We lived on Wellington Drive. Itzio Pinza was on my street at the time, and also Rabbi Gold. He was on Surrey Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, very nice, we had a lovely house. I remember. I think maybe your husband was Phil's. Phil was at my house. house. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know whether that was where you moved originally when you came, yeah, well, to, Stanford, we came to Stanford, or Avenue. that was the second move. No, no, that was uh, the house we moved to. I remember he worked for Crawford and Russell. Crawford and Russell, that was the company. And yeah. who were the principals in that company? Crawford. <laughs> uh, uh, he, he sort of knows the, he had, there were three men that started the company, and he knows the other guys out, and he was the sole proprietor, he owned the company. Mm -hmm. And what happened was that he would, from time to time, sell stock. And, you know, so he owned it, but he yeah. sold stock, and uh, we were able to buy some. Uh, I worked uh, with the Board of Education at Stanford, as a, first as a teacher and then as a school psychologist. And I never spent my money, I always saved it. So when we had options to buy stock, we had the money to buy mm -hmm. it. And then when the company was sold, it was really very nice. We had a big, 
loan some money, you know, and then Sydney invested it, and mm. that's why I'm living here. <laughs> well, that was a good move. Yeah, it was. The, the, he, he the was investment very, paid off. He was very smart. He knew what to do. Yeah. Uh, when Sid was working there, uh, was it, uh, were there a lot of Jewish people? No, or? no. Uh, it was a mixed group. It was very a nice fellow. We yeah. still meet every year. They have a luncheon at the Red Barn yeah. and all the people come. Yeah, in. I remember the building they were in. It was right yes, it around was the, the Yale Town Yale, Complex. Yale Town. Yeah, I think it was a Yale Town building. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Decrepit old thing. Yeah, a little red brick building. <laughs> That's right. I, I doubt whether it's there anymore. No, I don't think so. My daughters used to work there in the summer. They yeah. would tell, always told me how terrible that building was. Well, the, uh, you talked about your children. Yeah. I, I had a son that you know, yeah. I had Ralph. Ralph was the oldest. The oldest, yeah. yeah. He, was, he was four years old, and then I had twin girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know I was having twins, but on the uh, delivery table, I heard the doctor say, here, take this one. <laughs> he said, there's another one in there. Yeah. That's how I found that I was, I was having twins. They didn't have ultrasound. No, no ultrasound. <laughs> it, was, it was interesting mm -hmm. having the twins. And, you know, a bundle of work, but I managed. You managed with yeah. three youngsters. Yeah. When, when were you? Uh, when did you start your teaching career? And I where? started. I waited uh, until the uh, my son was finished with elementary school. He was going into the middle school, and the girls were about the third grade. You know, I waited until they were sort of settled. And then I went back to where I, I substituted for a while, and then I got a position as a teacher. What I, school were you teaching at? I taught at River, Riverbank, no, Roxbury mm -hmm. for two years, and then I went to Riverbank for another two years, and then after that I had I had gone back to college, got my master's degree in educational psychology, so that I qualified to be a school psychologist, mm -hmm. and I was learning and doing at the same time. But it was possible that they needed psychologists at the time, and I got an emergency license. Kermit Schulman was the head of the department at that time. I remember and he Kermit. Was, from yeah, and he was very helpful. Yeah, he guided me into this. Uh, he was very nice. He did a good job. Uh, I can remember Kermit coming to Rogers School. Yeah. And, oh, uh, yeah. Well, he was a psychologist, too. Yeah, and, and he's giving me the test, and he said yeah. you should go into retailing. <laughs> and he was right. <laughs> Now that uh, you're living in Stanford, were you involved in uh, the Jewish Center or any synagogues? Yeah, yeah. well, we, we were members of the Jewish Center. We, when they started out, we gave them a, a lump sum. I think we gave them $5,000. You're talking about the new building? The new building at that time, yeah. yeah. And we were members, you know, and uh, we, we joined them. And were, you know, yeah. I was a member. Did you belong to any religious organizations? Well, I, belong, I, I have been a member of Brandeis. It's sort of a Jewish organization. Yeah, I can say so. Uh, for many, many years. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's the thing I enjoy. And then I'm still a member. Mm -hmm. you know, I know the, the women. The Did you belong to any uh, synagogue or Yeah, temple? we belong. Uh, as soon as we moved here, my son was ready to be bar mm -hmm. So, So, uh, we plant, you know, in, in Long Island, where we came, you had a plant <laughs> years in advance yes. to get a spot. So I raced to, to Temple Sarni. We had been in a Reformed Temple, so I went to mm -hmm. another Reformed Temple. And I raced there to find out there was no rush. <laughs> I could have had any time I wanted. So the next year, he, uh, he was bar mitzvah at Temple Sinai. Was it at, on Grove Street, or where no, it is? No, 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 in the new building. In the new yeah. building. Yeah. And who was the rabbi at that time? Rabbi Silva. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was funny. Uh, the alarm went off. The fan broke, and the alarm went off. So for about 20 minutes, everybody was, you know, having dinner, and this alarm went off. <laughs> but it was a very lovely bar mitzvah. Enjoyed it very much, and my girls, they went to Sunday school at Temple Sunday, but mm -hmm. they didn't. They were bat mitzvahs when they were adults, 
they sort of didn't do too much. They weren't much. doing much at that time in no, Bartlesville. No, they really weren't doing too much. But as adults, they did get there. Yeah. I'm the only one who wasn't bar misfit in the family. <laughs> So where do your daughters live? Uh, one of them lives here in Stanford, uh -huh. uh, and one of the other daughter lives in Baltimore, the Baltimore area, mm -hmm. uh, Ellicott City, Baltimore. Yeah. And Ralph lives in uh, Atlanta, mm -hmm. Georgia. Yeah. Do you have grandchildren? I have five grandchildren. Uh -huh. uh, Irma, who lives here, has three children, and Betty had two children. Mm -hmm. So I have five grandchildren. Uh, when uh, you were involved in any political activities or anything other than uh, as sort of as a hobby, I yeah. wouldn't say I. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think I was. I'm much more involved now than I was because I was working mm -hmm. and I was bringing up three kids, mm -hmm. and Sydney couldn't really help me. You know, he was busy yeah. with his own work, and he worked very hard mm -hmm. uh, to establish this company. And so, you know, I was really enmeshed in my own life, yeah. so to speak. Um, when you had the time, did you travel? Did you? Oh yeah, we did a lot of travel. Uh, where, did, where did you? All over the world. All over. We did a lot of elder hostels. Mm -hmm. You know, that was when you know uh, we were a little older. Yeah. I always have lots of vacation as a teacher, and we yeah. always traveled a lot. I, I still like traveling very much, so I get to do. The uh, other leisure activities, I know that I've seen you. Well, mostly you know, I, I play in. Uh, I played in the Stamp, the original Stanford Symphony. Yeah. And then I played in the Norwalk Symphony. Mm -hmm. I played in the. Varian band for many, many years. And then I played in the Westport band for about 25 years. And I still play in the Westport band every Monday night. I scoot out for rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love it. It's, it's And you, you've fun. always, on these bands, you've always played the trombone. I always played the trombone, yeah. Mm -hmm. Second trombone, really. Not too high and not too low, right mm -hmm. in the middle. When I was 16, though, I started professionally, too. There was a women's symphony in Montreal, and they sent a scout around to the music and art high school. And before they got kicked out, she got my name and address. They didn't mm -hmm. want us to, to you know, play professionally at the time, but she contacted me. And uh, then I used to go for about 10 years, maybe once a year or yeah. twice a year. I travel up to Montreal for the concert. Mm -hmm. I'd study the music at home with the records, and then I'd go up for about a rehearsal, so one, uh, two days of rehearsing, and then we'd have the concert and come back. And it was very, very nice. I loved mm -hmm. that. Uh, you know, I got symphony, yeah. real symphony music. Like that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about living here in Edge Hill. Yeah. Uh, how is that working for you? Well, I like it very much. Mm -hmm. You know, it affords me a lot of leisure time. I don't have to cook, clean, mm -hmm. shop, you know, and so I you know, mm -hmm. enjoy my, myself. But I'm very busy. I go into the city a lot for concerts, and uh, I'm very, you know, I do a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm busy. Most people are pretty sedentary. <laughs> well, that's important to keep busy. Yeah. Are there any special stories or information that we haven't covered that you'd like to have us record? Well, I love gardening and flowers. I've always enjoyed that as a hobby. Mm -hmm. Are you able to do any of that here? Well, I have a couple of flower boxes. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep this orchid alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Music is a big thing, and I sing as well. I used to sing the uh, go to Shalom Choir for a couple yeah. of years, and then I go away to a, another group up in the Catskills for a week mm -hmm. and practice there. Last night I went to a sing in the uh, I guess it's the uh, Old Greenwich Presbyterian Church or uh, one mm -hmm. of the churches. They had what is known as a sing. You just come in and you sing. They were doing a pulak. Gloria, Mass, and I sang the Mass. 
glass. Oh. Are very lovely. They have beautiful stained glass windows in it. It's wonderful that you keep busy yeah. and can enjoy yeah, the I activities really that you participate yeah, in. Yeah. Are there any uh, pictures or other memorabilia that you'd like we can put on the disc? I mean, you have well, a wedding I picture? I a picture of uh, your mom. my mom. Uh, There's another picture. What was her full name? Lillian and Sobel. Sobel. Mm -hmm. Sobel was her maiden name. Yeah. I have a beautiful picture of my father, but it's a smaller picture. I didn't put it up there. It's very interesting. In the 1920s, when my grandfather, you know, went, was kind of flush with money. He was a butcher, and he did well. And they had money, and uh, they went to the home of Otto Kahn, who had, was having an auction at that time. And they bought a lot of artworks, statues, pictures. And there was one picture. It was the, the girl at the fountain, the, the Roman girl at the fountain, that, that was in the family. My mother had it. It was part of this collection of artwork that my grandparents bought. They also bought a grand piano, which I inherited in my first concert, mm. which I had given to my grandson who now plays the piano. I can't fit a grand piano mm. here. And uh, uh, there was this picture, and uh, my mother had it in her apartment. It was a beautiful painting, an oil painting. And then my sister took it from my mother when you know, my mother broke, you know, died. She took that. And then when my sister died, I was looking for that painting because I knew that she had it and I knew it was valuable, it was an old picture. And I couldn't find it. My sister was a bit of a uh, hoarder. And things were a mess and it was hidden. I went to her apartment three times. Finally, on the third visit, it was in the back of the closet and it was Mark draperies, but the picture was there. <laughs> I got the picture, and I have it here. And it, it needs some cleaning and work, but it's, it's a beautiful picture. Yeah. I hope to, to restore it and uh, hang it here. This is where it was before yeah. I, I took it down because I had it appraised. Mm -hmm. It's probably worth a few thousand dollars. It's a beautiful picture. This this uh, sculpture here, what, what do you remember? Marcus, Stanley Marcus. Yes. He did this. Uh, when he, uh, he went to Fordham and took his PhD in art, and he did a number of, uh, of aluminum pieces. And I bought this one. It was part of his doctoral dissertation, mm -hmm. I guess, and I took all this piece, which I like very much. This, this sculpture was done by Stanley Marcus. He has done a lot of uh, Jewish artwork. Uh, he was very much enamored with David Smith, who did a lot of work in aluminum. And this is also in aluminum. And uh, his pieces were, were fashioned after him. Now he's graduated and done other styles, but this is a, a, a piece that he did. I bring it to him every once in a while. Pieces come off and he fixes it for me. Those, those plaques over there are okay. years old when she got married. And as you can see, it was a very uh, elaborate wedding with a beautiful guy. And what's very interesting about that picture is on her lap, she's holding a Bible. And the flowers are adorning the Bible. When I was married, I was married with that Bible. And when my daughters were married, we used the same Bible, uh, each of us, when we were married. So it's kind of historic. My husband had to do some work in Japan, so we took the grand tour, you know, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Narita, some places in, in uh, Japan. And then uh, uh, my husband, I guess, uh, we were in, uh, it wasn't Tokyo, Narita was one of them. And, I carried those things back. I think my arm almost <laughs> fell off. It was heavy. But I, I bought them there and I love them. It's very important because you got to go fast. You, gotta, you don't want to get hung up <laughs> with a scratchy slide. Yeah, if you remember the beginning of the Sinatra in concert. <laughs> See, I'm 
an accompanying, it's, it, it, very little of it is, is melody. You don't get to do. This dress was borrowed from somebody's daughter. Well, it, was it was a very lovely dress. And my mother's dress was borrowed. My dress was borrowed. And you know, this girl was, was divorced. And I thought to myself, why did my mother get me a dress from a woman who got divorced? It wasn't a good omen. But anyhow, I didn't get divorced. But again. I felt that you know the marriage was was good because we were both Jew from Jewish families, very similar, and it helps a marriage when you understand each other in that way because your backgrounds are so similar. Recently, my son who's gay was going out with a fellow who was tough from Thailand, and then he broke up with him. And, you know, and I I can understand you know there was there's a there was a big cultural difference, so he. That relationship didn't last, but I think it was interesting for him. He was a Buddhist, and he learned a little about Buddhism. I said, what's, it, what's the ceremony like? He said, they eat, Mom. They keep eating all the time. <laughs> so that's all I know about Buddhism. He designs a tower. You see the tower in the back? Mm -hmm. He designed uh, some towers, and he made sure that it was never higher than what was there, and that's the bar. Uh, this is what Sujan looked like, you know, uh, when we were there. Some artists had displayed this, um, we bought it. You know, it's, and that's a picture of an Israeli artist that's the main sure, you know, the, the Jewish quarter with all the laundry hanging out. It's not going to show up too well. And way in the corner there is one of my favorite things. Uh, Ralph and I had a very tight relationship for 40 years. You know, he was my first child, and I was totally and completely devoted to him. And that's why I like that picture. I also breastfed him for two years. <laughs> so I, when I saw that picture in the museum, I bought it. Mm -hmm. 